It's an attempt to understand the life of cultures, especially past cultures, through the material record. We as archaeologists ought to say, here's the information that we have to contribute about how past societies have lived in their environments, how they communicated with each other, how they fought with each other, how they failed or succeeded. The Archaeological Institute of America is North America's oldest and largest organization devoted to the world of archaeology. First, we support archaeological research, which is critically important to understanding our past and our humanity. But it's not enough for archaeologists to do the research and understand it. Our job is to share that with the public. And the AAA does that with various outreach programs. Finally, we work to preserve and protect our cultural heritage so that it's there for future generations. The American Journal of Archaeology is the referee journal of the Institute, where scholars submit articles and they're judged by their peers, and the goal is to make sure that it's the best information that we as archaeologists can put forward. And that's the basis for discovering which are the things that are worth sharing with the public. The annual meeting happens in different cities around the country every year, and its primary goal is to provide a place where archaeologists can speak to each other, face-to-face -face interaction. Archaeological resources fit the definition perfectly of being a non-renewable resource. There, there is no more information about ancient Greece and Rome being created. All we can do is go out and collect more information. But we can't collect that information if it's being destroyed by modern development or environmental change, all sorts of things that are putting sites um, under, under threat. And so we have a responsibility to do our best job to preserve for the future that information that's lying there under the ground undisturbed. There are site preservation programs around the world. What I think is unique about AIA's program is that we look at best practices in site preservation and try to select the best of the best to not only support, but to highlight at our annual conference and in our publications so that we can encourage other archaeologists to adopt these practices and achieve more preservation throughout the world. The AIA Troop Lecture Program has been uh, in operation since 2004. For me, the program has been enormously satisfying, not just to reach out to a group to whom the AIA had not traditionally reached out, but also to interact with a group of people who can make a real difference to the preservation of the cultural heritage of Iraq and Afghanistan during a time of conflict. You know, we have a responsibility to engage with the United States military and make sure that there's communication so that when they are doing their work, uh, they are to the extent that they can, taking account of the, of the archaeology of these countries. These are areas where we simply can't be in residence right now. We have to reach out to the armed forces, and that's why we're doing these briefings, because it gives them a sense of how high the stakes are in terms of the preservation of the cultural heritage. We're so proud to be celebrating the 60th anniversary of Archaeology Magazine. Uh, any number of people over the course of my tenure on the magazine come up and say, you're with Archaeology Magazine? God, I've always wanted to be an archaeologist. It seems like the whole world has wanted to be an archaeologist at one time or another. It's one of our most dynamic outreach tools. It allows us to reach over 750,000 readers with each issue. Doctors, librarians, anybody who is inquisitive and who is fascinated or gets fascinated at some point in their life uh, about the human past. And once people get hooked on that, it's hard to give it up. One of the main missions of the magazine is to be able to relate this information to people's present lives. One of the unique things about AIA is that it's always been part of our mission to bring professional archaeologists and the public together. And that's the reason why today we have over a quarter million members in 107 local societies across North America and abroad. The beauty of AIA's local societies is that they reach out into over a hundred communities with programming that's customized to that community and important to the people who live in that community. Because of its prestige and uh, because most professional archaeologists have some connection to the AIA in some fashion, uh, the top archaeologists, uh, we're talking about really the big names in the field, are made available to the local societies. There's nothing like having scholars come 
in person and share their experiences. Archaeology, I think, inherently is fascinating for kids. And it's really through these young children that that first initial fascination with archaeology really comes about. Unfortunately, the way history is taught in the classroom, it's often presented in a way that just doesn't bring out how fascinating history is. The local societies are very, very involved in sending their members and archaeologists into local schools. Last year, the AIA reached out to over 7,000 people with our hands-on archaeology fairs. We invite local presenters, museum educators, archaeologists, university professors to come in and present activities that are geared towards children and families. These activities allow kids to participate in a hands-on way. And they learn their math, their geometry. Suddenly they're excited about these things because they're not just abstract concepts, they're real tools that allow you to accomplish something. It really does allow kids to tap into their inner curiosity. Kids love that sense of discovery. And when they can do a simulated excavation and they can discover past history for themselves, has a much bigger impact on them. It can hold their attention long enough to realize that people from the past who at first seem so different from them actually share many of the same feelings, many of the same challenges, and many of the same joys that we do today. When I did my first dig as a nine-year-old in South Dakota, it was just so liberating. Local societies have grants for students so they can attend an excavation. These excavations are life-changing experiences for kids. Some of them have never been out of the country. They get to find out what real archaeology is. In the process of finding out how to excavate and learn about the past, many of them tell us that they've really learned so much about themselves. As executive director of the AAA, what we do that I'm most passionate about is teach people about past cultures and civilizations in a way that helps them understand that they are not so different from us. If we don't understand all the cultures of the world and if we don't protect our past, then we're going to uh, lose an understanding of who we are as human beings. The AIA is reaching out to more people than ever before, but there's so much more that can be done. This dynamic programming can be brought to more diverse communities to bring the past to life in a way that will provide a better future for all of us.